Many believe that art is something abstract. You can't smell it, you can't feel it, but can you drive it? Hello everyone, we are in Constance, Germany, uh, the city which is near the border with Austria and Switzerland. And is this the new, pas the new Phaeton? Or is this a modified Passat? Or both of them? Well, ladies and gentlemen, here I will present you the 2018 Volkswagen Arteon. Actually, looking at it, it's pretty hard for me to describe to it. Yeah, these lines, these angles, I like that combines elegance and dynamism. It's weird, but nice and aggressive in the same time. I mean, we have like full LED with dynamic light assist and all this new kind of technology with the adaptive cruise control and line assist and everything is here. But look at this shape. The bumper connects the sides of the car only with this line here. There is a lot of chrome, so it's not metal. Here we have plastic, but good quality plastic. The bonnet is very long and it has like three lines on it. Two are staying on the bonnet and one line is starting, this line is starting from the headlights. This car comes with a 2.0 TSI engine with 190 horsepower and 320 newton meters. The car weights 1620 kilos, so more than a one and a half ton. Now let's move on the right side of the car. Firstly, what is easily to notice about this car is that the back window is split in two. And what other thing can you notice? What's here? Exactly, frameless windows. Where do you find these frameless windows? That's right, on coupés. So Arteon, Volkswagen Arteon is a four-door coupé. We have metal here. It goes from here and it has this shape. We have the elegance model, the mirrors. This is plastic. It's not metal, so don't get confused. We have an LED signaling here, signal light here. The, the mirrors have a pretty nice shape. This is chrome. The car comes with 18 uh, inch wheels. Car is 4.8 meters long, 1.8 meters wide and 1.4 meters um, in, in height. Distance to the ground is 14 centimeter. The axis. Yeah, it's impressive. I mean, you have a lot of space in this car. We will get also, we'll go also shortly to the, to the back of the car. Big door for petrol tank. Okay, because we are speaking about big things, let's move on the back of the car and I will show you the trunk. So, we are in the back of the car. Let me show you the trunk. Exactly, this is huge. I mean, this is the advantage of Arteon being a Grand Door Coupé. You have a huge trunk. This trunk has like 563 liters. This car doesn't have an automatic trunk for closing it. Arteon is written here. This car doesn't have a back camera. The tail lights are long and aggressive. On the sides of the car, we have two fake exhausts, so they are not active, they are only for design. Here we have a big stop light, I think this is how it it's called. So this is how it looks from exterior. It's mysterious, it's weird, but it's nice. We have here big frameless windows because we are looking at a coupé, a four-door coupé. I know, I know. The term is quite new since Audi came in 2007 with the A5 model, then BMW came later in 2012 with the 6 Series Grand Coupé. But an interesting fact is that some important car manufacturers loved the concept and continue to make use of it. BMW 4 Series and 6 Series, Mercedes CLS and GT, Audi A5 and A7, Opel Insignia, Ford Mondeo, Renault Megane Grand Coupe, 
On the driver's door panel, you will find a shiny plastic line with a metal door handle, a small speaker here together with two buttons for locking and unlocking the car. Below, the mirror controls buttons including folding and heating, front and back, window controls including lock button for child safety, and from here you can open the trunk. The driver's seat is power operated and it includes massage. All seats are covered in a combination of black leather with grey alcantara, which go quite nicely together. On the left side, quite below the dashboard, you can find the light control buttons. The steering wheel is covered in leather, on the left side we can see the adaptive cruise control buttons. Lower we find the volume controls. On the right side, the buttons for controlling the dashboard's multifunction display are available. Because we have an automatic gearbox, we also have shifting pedals. We don't have an active info display, but a classic dashboard with some red circles behind the dials. In the center, a small color TFT screen hiding the MFD car options. Placed between the center air vents, a small and decent analog watch gives the car a little bit of refinement. The air vents are subtle, you barely notice them. Below are two buttons from a maximum of three possible, because the version I tested doesn't have the automatic parking system. So starting from the left, we have the parking sensors button, front and back parking sensors, and emergency signal light. On this elegant version, we have a 9-inch Navigation Pro infotainment screen, full touch capability, and infrared sensors which provide the user with a very good feedback. The menus are standard, I wouldn't insist on that, as it is pretty common with what you can get nowadays from Volkswagen. Below, the airflow controls including the seat heating and last but not least conventional climate control settings. We have the rest and sync functions available. Sync is used to synchronize the climate settings for the driver and right passenger, while REST uses residual heated or cooled air from the engine to warm or cool while the engine is turned off. The car comes with a 7-speed DSG gearbox, keyless ignition and start and stop button. Yeah, the electronic parking brakes is available as well as the auto hold function. On the roof we have the interior lights button and other three buttons for SOS service and information. The quality of the materials from the inside is uh, satisfying, but you know what? I am disappointed. The interior is copied from the Passat. Identical. The Passat interior is great and appropriate, no doubt, but for a Passat. Arteon wants to be more than just normal and nice. I mean, look at the exterior. A lot of lines. A lot of hours working to create this dynamism, mystery and elegance just to ruin everything with a boring interior. It's not bad, but where's the charisma? Moving to the back, you have a big door, wide access inside and of course a lot of space. I am 185 and I have configured the driver's seat to suit me and as you can see, there is still a lot of space for the back seat passenger. Otherwise, yes, still Alcantara everywhere. An important thing to mention is that we have seated seats also in the back. So premium feature. As mentioned, we have the Elegance model, which is the less equipped version you can get on an Arteon, but even so, you still get 18-inch sport wheels, 8-speaker, 9-inch Discover Pro infotainment, and a lot of Alcantara. Theoretically, the car is designed to be used by 5 people, and a lot of luggage. So, hello everyone! As you already know, I just arrived in Frankfurt. Uh, this weekend I was in Constance. Uh, Constance is a city located in Germany, near the border with uh, Austria and uh, Switzerland. Actually, there is um, a lake, Constance Lake, or locally is known as Bodensee. Uh, it's the geographical point that separates these, uh, these three countries. So, to make a recap with you, on this weekend I had a Volkswagen Arteon 2.0 TSI petrol engine, 190 horsepower and 320 newton meters. 
with a 7-speed DSG gearbox and I drove actually 1010 kilometers and of course what will be next I want to share with you my impressions and thoughts regarding the experience that I had with this car so let's recap we have here 2018 Volkswagen Arteon the best looking Volkswagen car at the moment we speak according to Volkswagen representative this car will be considered as the replacement of the Passat CC model well it is hard not to get impressed when you see it for the first time. Lines, shapes, spectacular design and attitude, beauty and practicality. The artist came in the old and grey town to bring some color and changes. But is the artist indeed a revolutionary? Let's find out. 2 liter TSI petrol engine, straight 4 cylinder, 190 horsepower and 320 newton meters. Front wheel drive, 7 speed DSG gearbox with ACC, LED with DLA, heated rear seats, and a watch for almost 44,000 euros. This is the elegance version, which is the less equipped one, but even so, it has nice 18 inch wheels with Discover Pro infotainment and heated rear seats available. Going further, as you already know, I would like to make an analysis of this car based on four aspects. The first one would be price versus what you get and what some other options are. Second, who should buy this car? What is its audience? Next, good things versus bad things. And finally, how was my experience driving it? What are the conclusions? You pay almost 44,000 euros and you get a pleasant car. A car which you choose to be represented by because you have attitude. You like to be different. For this money, you get a potent engine which needs to handle the unexpected impressive mass of the car, more than 1.6 tons. You receive a grand coupe with premium design, fancy look and the big trunk. 560 liters capacity with a wide door access. But you expect a lot of automation and there is a lack of it. No automatic parking system, no automatic trunk door close, no back camera, no dynamic chassis control. I mean, you would have to pay more for these. The inside has the latest technology, but not all of them. Not for this money. You get ACC, parking sensors, auto hold, start and stop. But you get also plastic. Good quality plastic, but it's still not metal. And auto hold you can also get on a 25,000 Volkswagen Polo. Same goes for start and stop. Then there is the comfort and the space. This you don't get in a Polo or Golf, definitely not. But then again, guess what? You get it in a Passat. For 47,000 euros, you can have a fully equipped airline edition Volkswagen Passat with more power, four-wheel drive and more features than you find in this Volkswagen Arteon, such as automatic parking system with 360 degrees camera, active info display, ventilated seats, app connect and much, much more. Or if you want the equivalent version of a Passat, with the same feature you can buy it for less than 7000 euros. 7000 euros extra for a spectacular 4-door Grand Coupe with bigger trunk access but which still looks like a Passat inside? As much as the car impresses me, sorry, that's too much. For 45,500 euros you can acquire the new Audi A5 with S-Line package with almost the same options available but better interior quality or a cheaper 42,000 euros Opel Insignia Grand Sport. The car looks good but the approximately 500 Newton meters given by the B-Turbo diesel engine is actually not that remarkable. BMW 420 is also a competitor for almost 46,000 euros with a rear wheel drive, iDrive infotainment system and better quality inside. For Mondeo can also be an interesting option with the titanium version, very well equipped for 41,000 euros. Car of the year in 2015 and still one of the most sold cars in the class. The Volkswagen Passat, aside from the conventional status and look, it's a very interesting option. Even if the exterior will convince you, the Arteon inherited a lot from the Passat. To be honest, 
you can get in Passat enough comfort and technology for much less money. The Arteon comes with the more expensive version with a lot of power, premium features, but at the price range that makes you think twice. All of them don't have the space and composure that Arteon has, or personality. Audi and BMW win the battle when you get into the car. Premium quality and therefore also better feeling being in the car. The insignia is nice, ingenious, but it is shy. It somehow prefers not to get involved in the competition as it doesn't feel confident enough. Ford Mondeo is not a bad option. However, it still loses the battle because of reliability. The Arteon is a nice car to drive for both small and long distance journeys, especially for long distance journeys. It is a long and elegant car that can be used by a big family when going to any destination, or someone that wants to get noticed on the street without paying 80,000 for a BMW or Mercedes. Someone extroverted, but not too much, that wears a nice suit and a mid-price Omega watch. Someone that likes comfort more than sportiveness in a car. Someone that will say that the Passat is a boring car from the exterior. Good things versus bad things. As I already said, I used this car during our trip in Germany, visiting the amazing places at its border with Austria and Switzerland, overall beyond 1000 kilometers. There are many positive things that need to be mentioned. I mean, come on, it looks good. It's nice to drive. Not only the driver, but all the passengers have a nice feeling being in the car because of the comfort and space. There is a lot of space in the trunk as well. It has some of the latest technology and some premium feature. It's a car of the present and I think it will be able to still impress people in the next 2-3 years. As a negative point, because it is a long car, it is very heavy. From this perspective, I wouldn't recommend the 1.5 TSI engine. It simply does not fit well with the car. A 2.0 TSI or 2.0 TDI engine will be able to cope better with the 1630 kilos car plus the people inside it. The steering angle is relatively small. I expect it to be able to steer easier around corners or narrow places. It is electrically assisted. The steering wheel is not so big so maneuvering it is quite easy and pleasant but you still need to do a 3 point turn. The interior and the exterior are in contrast. The exterior is spectacular. It's like driving a Bentley having a BMW interior. Something doesn't make sense. Let's sum up. Three days, more than 1000 kilometers and the joy of driving Grand Door. A four-door coupe Grand Door. Everything outside looks new, futuristic. When the curtain rises, a master appears on the stage. The audience is there. They like what they see and there's no reason not to. It's practical and pleasant. It can be used for ordinary things, even if it excels through elegance. Lines, shape, dynamism and elegance. Enigma outside, plainness inside. It's a very strange that it's only a Volkswagen. A Volkswagen at the borders. Along the German side of the Lake Constance history, art and culture meets beautiful sceneries all with the view of the vastness of the lake. It's also well worth visiting the 22 meter high viewing tower on the pier. The car ferry to Switzerland also docks on the lakeside promenade along with the renovation docks for the ships of Lake Constance. The extensive port area along Seestrasse and Uferstrasse adds a hint of maritime flair to the promenade. Numerous cafes are on hand for those who care to linger. The lakeside promenade at Friedrichshafen is one of the longest and most beautiful on Lake Constance. The Zeppelin Museum is a must for all visitors to Friedrichshafen with the world's largest collection of artifacts concerning the history of airship travel.
The town of Constance not only looks back on an eventful history, it also has plenty of culture to offer. One of the most important events in the town's history was the papal election during the Council of Constance 600 years ago, the only time this ever occurred north of Alps. Relics and buildings from that period can still be discovered throughout the town. The Imperia is a statue at the entrance of the harbour of Constance, Germany, commemorating the Council of Constance that took place there between 1414 and 1418. The concrete statue is 9 meters high, weighs 18 tons, and stands on a pedestal that rotates around its axis once every 4 minutes. It was created by Peter Lang and clandestinely erected in 1993. The erection of the statue caused controversy, but it was on the private property of a rail company that did not object to its presence. The Imperia shows a woman holding two men on her hands. The two men represent Pope Martin V and Emperor Sigismund. Martin V was elected during the council, while Sigismund was the king who called the council. The statue refers to a short story by Balzac, La Belle Imperia. The story is a harsh satire of the Catholic clergy's morals, where Imperia seduces cardinals and princes at the Council of Constance and has power over them all. Starfish, seahorses, rays and sharks are all at home in Constance and can be seen up close in an underwater tunnel in Sea Life Constance. One of the classic day trip destinations for visitors of all ages is the flower island of Mainau and is a must see for those interested in botany. It would be a shame not to see the rare plants and trees you can find growing on the island. The precious arboretum makes Mainau a unique park experience at all times of the year. This parkland invites you to wander, linger and observe. Welcome under the giant redwoods, atlas and Lebanon cedars, metasequoias and tulip trees to mention just a few of the more well-known ones. A visit to the second largest butterfly house in Germany is certainly one of the highlights of my now day out. Relish the tropical feeling as you walk through the exotic landscape of unique vegetation. Observe and admire 120 different species of free-flying tropical butterflies from Africa, Asia, Central and South America in the butterfly house, kept at 90% humidity and temperatures between 25 and 30 degrees.